Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. I get so many questions about whether or not a master's degree or a PhD from an EAC or ABET accredited curriculum will count as experience towards PE licensure. And in this video, I will explain this to you by reviewing a study that was done by Michaela Martin PE from Oak Ridge National Laboratory and Kurt Stafford from the University of Tennessee to help you clarify if you can use these types of degrees towards your qualifying licensure experience. This episode is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. Let's first look at if a master's degree from an EAC or ABET accredited curriculum counts as experience towards PE licensure. The model law states that a graduate degree in engineering may be used for one year of experience toward licensure. In accordance, the vast majority of engineering boards will grant that one year of qualifying experience for a master's degree. Of the 47 state boards that do allow one year of credit for the master's degree, 15 have adopted regulations allowing for a maximum of one year of credit for all postgraduate degrees. It is assumed that this credit will be used for a master's degree, but the year can also be used for a PhD degree as well. Notable exceptions include California, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. California will allow six months of credit for the successful completion of a master's degree. Neither Nevada nor Pennsylvania currently allows for this type of credit. And in Virginia, it is sometimes possible to get credit, but there are no set designations. And therefore, the decision rests entirely with the state board. It should also be noted that it takes most graduate students approximately two years to receive their master's degree. A lot of them do it part-time while most states offer only one year of credit for this advanced degree. This means that it could actually take less time to become eligible for the PE exam if a student declines to pursue a master's degree. Now, let's look at if a PhD from an EAC or ABET accredited curriculum counts as experience towards licensure. Some state boards have adopted laws that allow for a maximum of one year's credit for successfully completing postgraduate study while other states simply allow one year for completing specifically a PhD degree. Each state that will allow a year for the PhD degree also allows one year for a master's degree. 14 of the surveyed boards did not grant credit for the PhD degree. Idaho is included in this group, but the board is currently reviewing that policy. Mississippi and California both grant credit for the degree, but not the typical one year of credit. The state of Mississippi will allow two years for successfully completing a PhD while also allowing one year for a master's degree. This means that Mississippi would allow an applicant a total of three years of credit potentially. Louisiana will allow two years for the PhD applicant if the applicant has not already claimed one year for a master's in engineering. California will grant six months of credit. Note that California is quite similar to states that offer two years of credit for postgraduate degrees. The two six-month experience credits that they offer are proportional because in California, applicants need only two years experience to sit for the PE exam. Postgraduate experience credit varies from state to state. State boards tend to deal with postgraduate credit in one of two ways. Some have adopted laws and regulations that treat master's and PhD degrees separately, while others allow a maximum of one year that can be applied and utilized with either. Credit ranges from zero time to three years of credit, 
for a combination of both masters and a PhD. But to be 100% sure, please check with your state board for their current guidelines as they change often. I hope you found this week's video helpful. Again, we do want to reference and thank Michaela Martin and Kurt Stafford for their research in this area. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will be published weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I beg you to leave comments below this video. Maybe there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a problem you need solved. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.